Every major sports league in America mostly prefers offense over defense. Fans do that too. Who could blame them? It's always more fun to see a crazy shot go in rather than watching someone steal the ball or making a defensive play. After all, it's all about who scores more points, right? Hey everyone, I'm Purple Prince and I want to take a break from all the offense and tell the story of the fourth best shot blocker in NBA history, Mark Eaton. Mark Eaton was born on January 24, 1957 in Inglewood, California. He grew up in Southern California and nothing in his childhood or his teen years suggested that he would make his mark on basketball. In fact, he was more interested in water polo and played it really well. Eaton didn't play basketball until his senior year at Westminster High, where he mostly sat on the end of the bench. He continued his education after Westminster High, but he didn't want to play basketball. He instead studied and worked as an auto mechanic in Glendale, Arizona. One day, when Eaton already was 21 and repairing cars in Orange County, he was spotted and persuaded by Cypress College coach Tom Lubin to learn back into basketball again. That worked, and he spent two years at Cypress. He was a solid college player, averaging 14.3 points per game and led the school to the California state title as a sophomore. Already after his freshman year, Eaton was in demand as an athlete and was eventually drafted by the Phoenix Suns in the 5th round with the 107th overall pick in 1979 NBA Draft. But he played one more season at Cyprus and after that chose to return to college basketball. Eaton transferred to UCLA but was an afterthought there. In his senior season, Eaton averaged just 1.3 points, 2 rebounds and played in just 11 games for a total of 42 minutes. Seeing how his college career is a bust, Eaton was very close to quitting basketball once again. But none other than Will Chamberlain saw something in him. Chamberlain was often attending UCLA practices and on one occasion he took Eaton under the basket to explain that his focus should not be on scoring points but rather defending the basket, getting rebounds and passing the ball to quicker guards. In various interviews since, Eaton has cited Chamberlain's advice as the turning point of his basketball career. Lack of playing time in UCLA really damaged Eaton's stock going into the 1982 NBA draft, but Utah Jazz took a chance and drafted Eaton in the fourth round with 72nd pick. What was thought to be a waste of a pick turned out to be one of the best shot blockers in NBA history. In his rookie season, Eaton was an impact player right away. During the season, Eaton got so good he even replaced Danny Shays as Utah's starting center. In just 18.9 minutes per game, Eaton averaged 4.3 points, 5.7 rebounds and an impressive 3.4 blocks per game. Eaton finished his rookie season with 275 total blocked shots, setting a new franchise record for Utah Jazz. In his first year, Eaton was already the third best shot blocker in the league behind Wayne Rollins and Bill Walton. Next season, he was even better. Eaton was a bona fide starter. He played 26.1 wins per game, averaged 5.6 points, 7.3 rebounds and 4.3 blocks. He set a new block record for the franchise with 351 blocked shots and his 4.3 blocks per game led the league by a pretty big margin. With Eaton in the middle, Jazz defense was so good that they made playoffs regularly. Fun fact, one of the shots he didn't block was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's skyhook, which gave Kareem his 31,421st point to become NBA's all-time leading scorer. Eaton's third season was his most impressive. He played more than ever, averaging 34.3 minutes per game, and scored 9.7 points, grabbed 11.3 rebounds, and averaged unbelievable 5.6 blocks per game. In total, Eaton blocked 456 shots, shattering the record for total blocks set more than 10 years ago by Elmore Smith with 393. The league's second best blocker that year was Hakeem Olajuwon, and he, compared to Eaton, averaged a future 2.7 blocks per game. For the excellent season, Eaton was named the NBA All-Defensive First Team and was honored as the NBA's Defensive Player of the Year. Eaton wasn't blocking as many shots in the 85-86 season, but he made the NBA All-Defensive First Team blocking 4.6 shots per game, which that season was the second best behind Manute Ball. In 1987 and 1988, Eaton reclaimed his position as the NBA's best shot blocker and in the process made the NBA all-defensive second teams in both seasons. Eaton was playing alongside two Hall of Famers in John Stockton and Con Lone, and while offense was going mainly through them, Eaton knew his role and played it to perfection. 
In his last league-leading block season in 1989, Eaton was selected to an NBA All-Star game with his teammates Carl Malone and John Stockton. Too bad that he had such a short time with both superstars. By the 1990, Eaton's shot blocking and rebounding ability was starting to decline. He couldn't average more than 2.5 blocks per game anymore, and the dropping rebounding rates as well as never developed scoring ability really showed that his career is coming to an end. In his first 8 seasons, Eaton only missed 6 games, but in his last years with Jazz, Eaton was noticeably slowed by knee and back injuries. He still performed his role well, but not like he once did. Utah Jazz made the playoffs every year with Mark Eaton as their center, but unfortunately didn't experience much success. The furthest he got in the playoffs was in 1992, when Utah Jazz lost in conference finals to Portland Trailblazers in 6 games. That was pretty much his last good season, as in his final 1992-93 season, he played just 17.3 minutes, averaging just 2.8 points, 4.1 rebounds and 1.2 blocks. He was less than 100% most of the year and by the end of the season, Eaton had lost feeling in his hip and one leg. He still had one year remaining on his contract with the Jazz, and Eaton even reported for training camp but soon realized that this is the end of his career. In an interview after he was retired, Eaton said, I tried everything, rehab, the holistic approach, every trick I could think of to get healthy, but nothing worked. On the first day of training camp, I was out there for about 15 minutes, then it was like, yeah, I think we're done here. Honestly, it took a good 5 or 6 years for my body to really heal up. Mark Eaton finished his career with 875 played games, scored 5,216 points and grabbed 6,939 rebounds. His 3,064 blocked shots are the 4th best score in NBA history and his game average of 3.5 blocks is still the all-time best rate. Utah Jazz retired Eaton's number 53 jersey during the 1995-96 regular season. Basketball remained a big part of Mark Eaton's life after retirement. He was a president of the National Basketball Retired Players Association from 1997 to 2007. And he helped Jeremy Evans in 2013 NBA Slam Dunk Contest, where Evans jumped over a seated Eaton to perform his dunk. In 2008, Mark Eaton started his career as a motivational speaker. He uses the lessons he learned in basketball and applies them to the concept of teamwork and business. So that's Mark Eaton guys, the 4th best shot blocker in NBA history and a two-time defensive player of the year. Do you think he could ever be in the NBA Hall of Fame? Could he had a more successful career if he would dedicate himself to basketball right away? Be sure to make a comment, like this video and subscribe for future NBA content. This is Purple Prince and I'm out. People ask me what the future is, all I know is I'll be doing this, all I know is things are moving quick, that's convenient for me cause that's how I live, now they see me out here moving up, you don't like me that makes two of us, time change yeah I can't adjust, yo it's who you are not who